بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماء
from major impurity and purification from minor impurity. It's part of what we stand stand upon. And it is important we all understand this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept anything from us except something that is given. Look at how Allah is approaching the concept of purification in Islam. Just check Surah Tumaida verse 6. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu al When Allah says, Ya ayu al-Nas, there's a reason for it. 
when he say ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu there's a reason for it ya ayyuhal nas is for the deep and hurry is for the generality of mankind for everyone without any exception whatsoever but when he says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu then that one means this speech is specifically directed to the believers those who have faith in their heart who have strong belief in the oneness of Allah now what does it say Allah is calling on us it is believed that when you come for Jumat you are likely quote on a quote you are likely to be among the mu'minun that is where you are in the mosque you might not likely to be among the mu'minun and you are in the mosque. It is very clear and possible. That is not what I'm discussing today. Coming to the mosque has not completely confirmed your faith in Allah completely. You are either among the ayyuhal ladina amanu or ya ayyuhal nas. Because among nasu, we have muslimun, mu'minun, muqsinun. Hadi maratib al-islam. So let's agree we are all by Allah's grace among al-mu'minun. Now Allah is talking to us. He's addressing on the sea. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Holy mu'minu. Holy mu'minu. Ida kumtum ila salat. If you want to establish salat, if you want to pray, you want to observe salat the way you are coming in to observe Juma prayer. Ida kumtum ila salati. If you are to observe salat, if it is time for you to worship me, look at it. Just need for tahara. Just need for cleanliness. Just need for purification. He says, far. For that reason alone, that you are coming to meet me anywhere, either in the mosque or outside the mosque, to worship me, to observe salat. Wash your face. Without digressing unnecessarily, these three to four points Allah is mentioning is categorized as part of Farah al Udu. The obligatory aspect of Udu. Now Allah says, Iksidu Udu Akum, wash your face. Wa aidiyakum ilal marafiti. And wash your hand to your uncle. This is your uncle, Ibad Allah, to your elbow, sir. To your elbow. Wash your hand to your elbow. Wamsahu biru sikum. Then, what do you call it? Imsahu. This one is not washing. Touch your head. Rub it. Rub it is different from washing. Rub. Rub your head back and front. Wa arjunikum illa kabein. And your two legs to the ankle. When you are washing your leg, when you are when you are rubbing it, rubbing to the ankle. This one has given us an insight into what we call ablution. This is complete ablution. That means perform ablution before you before you can ever come to worship me. Ibad Allah. I also look for time to discuss here maybe two different khutbah, the significance of ablution in Islam. We have a lot of things in Islam that we fail to understand, that we fail to discover. When it comes to ablution alone, you can do so many things. You can perform miracles with ablution. If only you know hakikatul udu, you know the reality behind ablution. This normal ablution that some of us just perform before stepping in into the mouth is very significant in Islam. Very important. It can save a lot of things in you. It can, it can save you here and save you hereafter. Common ablution that we all know. 
But that is not the main point of our discussion today. But these four things I have mentioned, your face, rubbing of your head, of your hand, and of your legs, those are four major things has completed the concept of ablution as far as Islam is concerned. And that is part of part of Tahara we are discussing today. A Tahara to fill Islam. Purification in the religion of Islam. So ablution is very important. That is why Rasulullah says, La salata liman la udu ala. La salata liman la udu ala. For whoever failed to have a sound ablution had surely failed to have sound salat. No ablution, ibadala, no salat. So if we, we are put into test in this mosque, that each and every one wants to get up and be performing ablution without any reservation, without any apology, more than half of this population will fail the test. Because we don't take the issue of our deed very serious. The way we take our job serious. The way we take money making very serious. The way we take going to school, attending Western education very serious. If I say a man of 15 years old does not know how to perform proper admission, is he not insulting? I was born before your mother was married, and uh, that, that's a story. The simple thing is that you do not know how to perform a sound ablution and you are 50 years old as a Muslim. If not by the mercy of Allah, what do we say about your about let's say 30 years salat? Let's assume you are you have not been serious about salat from the age of 1 to 18, 19, hatta sirta But 30 years with a default ablution. What happened to your salad in Allah? If you are confirmed not to know how to perform ablution and you are be praying for two things, what happened to your salad? If not by the mercy of Allah, we will just go by what Rasulullah Sallallahu says, لا يدخلن أحدكم أمله للجنة إلا أن يتغمضه الله برحمته قيل ولا أنت يا رسول الله قال ولا أنا إلا أن يتغمضني الله برحمته None of us can boast of our deeds that it will earn us automatic certificate to pass And he said to Rasulullah Even you is not even me except by the rahmah of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not the ablution, it's not my major discussion. You will get it right when I get to where I want to make the point. And Allah now says, when we want to talk of ablution, Ibad Allah, you talk of water to be used for ablution. When we start discussing the concept of acceptable water for ablution, there will be a problem. It's just that we have to do what we call yani, al-wastiyya, like we discussed two weeks ago. We just go through wastiyya wal itida because the nazar. We just owe Allah, take it the way it is. You know we are weak. We know nothing. Don't accept it for us. Because if you, if you want to perform ablution now, just like I just did, you open your tap. Grrr, are you sure the water is clean for ablution? If I don't know. Are we sure a chemicalized water? When we start explaining the kind of water that is acceptable in Sharia of Islam, some of this water will be condemned for ablution. If I don't Except by the mercy of Allah, He will accept our prayer. Because we have no choice. We have no choice. For the Ruratu to be Hulmahaduratu. I am not still going into that. It's just for your information. 
There are some water that are drinkable but are not good for evolution. You stab on lil adati wala you stab on lil ibadati. You stab on lil adati, you can use some water for drinking and for domestic use. Wala you stab on lil ibadati, you can use it when it comes to act of worship. Because some people believe once I can drink water, it's good for evolution. La. فَاللَّهُ لَا يُعْبَدْ بِالْأُقُولِ دِينُهُ بِشِرْعَةِ الْمَنْقُولِ اللَّهُ لَا يُعْبَدْ بِالْأُقُولِ دِينُهُ وَقُرْبُهُ بِشِرْعَةِ الْمَنْقُولِ You don't worship Allah with your common sense. Yeah, I know it's okay now. I feel it's okay. Don't feel it. Go back to Rasulullah. And find out what he says about that act you are about to perform. If it is in line with him, Alhamdulillah, you are good to go. If no, you have to correct yourself. I will give you an example. Here is a clean water, completely clean, with all the attributes of a clean water. This Tohara, if you are not taking, will take us two, three months. And I don't know. Then we allow with that us. But there's something I wanted to point out here. If you have a clean water in a glass of water and honey, look at it, honey, a drop of honey enters into the water, you can still drink the water. In fact, you will be okay. I'll have to lie. I don't have honey in my water. Can you use that water for ablution? No. No. If sugar, a pinch of sugar inside of water, you can drink it. What about milk? Anything eatable, consumable for man, when it enters into water, you can use it for ablution again. But you can drink it, that you can use it to cook. That's why I said you stumble, feel the adati, whether you stumble, feel the ibadati. Ibad Allah, we have a lot to learn. I have been a Muslim in the, for the past, I am now 65 years of age. And Ibad Allah, and you, if you score you, you score maybe 50 over 100 at your age. It's not too good. We have enough time to research and read on our own, to have better understanding of all these elementary aspects of our deed. What I call it elementary, elementary aspect of our team. As elementary as they are, they are so significant to Ibad. Ibad Allah. And Allah went further to say, Wa in kuntun juluman fatoharu. And when you are spiritually impure, when you are spiritually impure, fatoharu, clean up. Make sure you clean up. Clean up yourself. Fatoharu. We all know what Janaba means. If you don't know what Janaba means, then what do I say? Then I say, I will be, I will be in doubt if you are a true Muslim or not. When you say Janaba, say, me Janaba. Janaba. What is Janaba? Ah, la ilaha illallah. You have nobody can tell me here, you don't know what Janaba means. Anybody who says what is Janaba, maybe is underage. Maybe a, a boy or a girl, a boy, a boy of 12 years or 11 years. When you say what is Janaba? But today, even our children are supposed to be conversant with the concept of ritual baths. Ibad Allah. And Allah says, Wa in kuntun junuba. And if you are spiritually impure, Foto Haru, purify yourself. How do you purify yourself? I'm sorry to say, some people have been married for decades. They don't know how to observe Janaba. And they have been praying. They have been fasting. They have been holding Quran. What happened if our Janaba is defective? It's default, Ibad Allah. I'm not joking at all. A man of 40 years who has been married for 10 years. After I got married at the age of 30 and we have three kids, 
and you have been sleeping with your wife, and you have been observing Janaba, and Janaba is null and void. What happens to all the Ibadat you have been doing since you became an adult? It's nothing to talk about Ibadallah. We have to find out how we can do it better. Why should we prefer to be among let my people go? You know what, 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 you know what when we say that in the school? Let my people go. When you write an exam, boys, and you are giving, you score 38 and a half. And the first mark is what? 40. So, well, let him go. Add one and half to his mark to score 40. That's what we call let my people go. Or it's called 39 and a half. Give him half, half by like just half. That's him. Don't let him come back for this single paper next year. That's what I let my people go. So this is what will happen to some people through the Holy Prophet Muhammad. It is Rasulullah that will say, Allah, please let my people go. It's only him that will have that opportunity. But I want to try as much as possible to score like uh, like uh, 65. 65. So that prophet can add 5 to it. It will be 70. He will be proud of me. At least I got that in 5 marks. Not you that was, If you score 50 over 100, how do they let you go in that amount? Even as a teacher, if a student scores 18 over 100, how do you cover him up, Ibadullah? It's a problem. This is the issue of our deen, Ibadullah. We have to go and learn more about it. It's not about your age. It's not about the year you started observing Salah. It's not about the year of your marriage. We are simply saying here that you have been married for decades. Yes, you don't know how to perform sound ritual vows. What happened to all your ibadat? Just remember, when you remember Rasulullah, you have more hope. You are more optimistic. That's why we continue to tell you about reservation of a salat for the Holy Prophet Muhammad. When you remember him as your Lord, then you are more optimistic. Illa an yatagamada mi Allah bi rahmati ibadallah. I've not got into the issue I want to discuss at all. Look at how I'm going left and right. Just for us to get the concept right. Ibadullah, he says, Wa in kuntu if you fall sick and you cannot touch, there's what we call, subhanAllah, how do I go about it? Oh Allah, I beg you. There's what we call dry ablution, there's what we call wet ablution. Al uru wa tayammum. If you tell a Muslim, an adult, what is tayammu? Taya. Taya what? And my friend, let's talk something serious. Nothing can ever be slower than what is asking that you don't As a Muslim, as an adult. Ante mukallas, ibad Allah. If you don't know what they call tayammu, at this computer age, ibad Allah, you are a failure. You are only scolding your children for failing from their examination. You are also a failure before you pay. If you don't know what Tayammu means, if you don't know how to perform Tayammu at this age, at this point, that you can go now, now, and you you get it clearly. We have wet ablution and dry ablution. Allah is not saying here Al Quran. Oh, I love Al Quran. Al Quran is the greatest book. He says, "Wa in kuntu if you happen to fall sick, if you are ill." How Allah is suffering, or you are on a hectic journey. Or one of you just visit toilets, return from toilets. Are you have a contact with a woman? You have a contact. When I say a contact, there are so many ways you can have a contact with a woman. I'm not going to that again. That one alone is a concept. Allah must nisa. I'm giving us the explanation of Surah Al-Ma'ida, verse 6. Allah must nisa. Uh, you have a contact with a woman. In that regard, if you are on ablution, 
Can you kiss your wife? And your ambition still remain intact or not? That's another concept in other life. That somebody asked him, can I have a kiss with my wife when I'm already on ambition and my ambition will still remain intact? Rasulullah said yes. He said what? Another man asked me, can I have a kiss with my wife when I'm on ablution and my ablution will remain intact? Or should I say no? Which one do we take? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now know that the first man that asked him was an old man. An old man whose libido is getting weaker. The libido, at least you know libido now. The libido is already weak. They have to wake him up before he can wake up man in the when the something is to happen. That is Rasulullah said, come on, kiss cannot wake the man up. So his manhood will not be wet. So the abolition will remain what? Intact. But for a, a young child. <laughs> Al Kahul, soldier man. The other said, No, 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 no. I see what I was saying like this. No, I said, No, 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 no. Don't try it. Because the libido is very sharp and strong. You will still come to the stage of that post, that man. He said, No. This is, these are the things we need to understand about Rasulullah. That calls for no fight, that calls for no argument, moderation. And you cannot find water to clean up yourself, not to talk of performing ablution. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Look at Islam. Look at Allah. Look at consideration. Look at moderation. No water to clean up yourself. You can't leave me without worshiping me. I'm too great for that. So what do you do? Father, far. On these circumstances that you find yourself. Look for a clean heart. Clean again. Clean heart. Dust. Sorry. A clean one perform dry ablution. So how do we perform dry ablution in the Allah? I said it earlier that if we do a cross examination that all of us will go into ablution point, Imam want to test each and every one of us. For wet ablution, I said most of us will fail. Not to talk of dry ablution. So people don't even know what time mom is all about in the Allah. Let's take our team very serious. Allah. Anybody can go at any time. And if you die, the angels will visit your grave and ask you questions. How then do you answer the questions? Allah. Allah says, Fatayama Musa'ina to Yiman. He now explains how to perform dry ablution. Look at the law. He says, From Sahu be uju he rub your face. During the wet ablution. Fagi silu uju haku wash with wet ablution. When it comes to dry ablution, rub your face with a very clean hands. What idea come and your hand clean from the door, from the heart. Onzo, Ibad Allah, I don't explain dry ablution to you. I just explained dry ablution that you don't know for decades. I just said it. I now say, you read where the Lord will be in Haraj. Allah is not interested in putting in hardship upon you. He's not. That is moderation. That is Rahmatullah. Illa an yataga maya ni Allah bi rahmat is part of the meaning. Ma yuri the law, liyajal alaykum min haraji. Walakin yuri the little hirakum. He's only interested in cleaning you and cleansing you and purifying you. Walti mani matau alaykum and he's out to perfect his favor upon you. La Allah kum tashkuru so that you can be grateful to him. Ibad Allah. 
This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He says once again in Surah Al-Baqarah, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawwabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who repent sincerely to him. He demonstrates and exhibits his love to them. Those who have themselves purified in all aspects, in all forms of both physical and spiritual, Allah loves them. This is what Allah is saying, and we have to understand it about Allah. Even in Surah Al Mudassi, I'm bringing us closer to the concept of cleanliness and purification in Islamic monotheism based on the Quranic injunction first. In Surah Al Mudassi, Qala Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya Ayyuhal Mudassir, Kum fa'anzir wa rabbaka fa'kabbir. وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَهِرْ وَالرُّجِسَ فَحَجُ وَلَا تَمْنُنْ تَسْتَقْفِرْ Surah Allah Al-Azim Look at how sweet Al-Quran is If you don't know Al-Quran, you are missing, you are losing It says, يَا أَيُوَا الْمُنَفْتُرْ You know the meaning Kum, get up, fa'anvin Warn Warn people as I'm warning us today about our religion we are taking it with levity, Ibad Allah. You are only killing your child for failing from school. You are also a failure as far as Islam is concerned. Nobody can kill you but remember death. He said, Kum fa'anzir wa rabba kafakabir. Exalt your Lord, Muhammad. What follows it? Wa thiyabaka fatahir. Then make sure that your clothes, your garment, whatever fiyab, even your pants is your fiyab, your sirwa is your fiyab, your cap is your, is your fiyab, your handkerchief, everything on you must be clean. Ibad Allah. If you have to do examination, if we ask people to be entering toilet, if not that Islam does not allow us to see our nakedness, if your mom says, I like it coming, remove your throat and let me see the books that you are putting on. So people will be um, disqualified from observing this tumor as I speak. Because the son, the books are, mm, how many days I like it? It's just five days, subhanAllah. Just five days, Ibad Allah. And Allah said to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Wasiyabaka photo. <laughs> Make sure everything you are putting on is very clean. Warujiza for her do do away with everything with all forms of death. D I R T A deaths. Do away with it. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Holy Quran for us to understand. He says, Ya Yalladin Amanu, Kulu min at Tayyibat, min Tayyibat, ma razak minakum. Even anything you are going to consume, make sure it is clean. Anything you are going to consume, make sure what? It is clean. It is on this note we are trying to introduce ourselves to the concept of purification as far as Islam is concerned. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billahi ra'iya. الحمد لله وكفى صلى الله على النبي المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم رسالة رسالة الله يا من أجل إخواننا no one but him وأن محمدا أبوه ورسوله and thirdly the prophet Muhammad he made a great messenger prophet and servant of Allah سبحانه وتعالى إباد الله I am a servant of Allah, Audun Allah Badi, to go back to what we were discussing in the first segment of our sermon, the concept of Abdohara. It is important we understand this that Rasulullah now says after Quranic injunctions. 
Rasulullah says, and Abi and Abi Malik, Al Haris bin Asim, Al Ashari, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الطهور شطر الإيمان صلى الله عليه وسلم. Rasulullah has come to explain further on what Allah, His Creator, said in the glorious Quran. Because for hadith, inna hiya tafsir al Quran. Hadith is not for tafsir of the whole Quran. The best tafsir is tafsir al Quran bil Quran, from tafsir bil hadith in Nabawi Sharif. The best tafsir you can give ever is to do tafsir of Quran with al Quran. Then you cannot do tafsir al Quran bil ahadith in Nabawi. That you do tafsir of Al-Quran with the traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. He says here that At-Tuhuru Shatirul Iman, cleanliness, purification, look at it, is a whole half of faith. Yeah, a whole half of faith. That means if you are dirty in any way, you have lost a complete half of your faith to be a mu'min, a believer in the oneness of Allah. Subhanahu wa in the oneness of Allah. Do not forget that Allah says, Ya you are lavina amanu ila kumtu ila solati. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, At tahuru shatiru li imani. Ya you are lavina amanu imani. Rasulullah is also giving us further explanation of the Quranic injunction by saying cleanliness, purification is a whole half of faith. That means if you are dirty in all forms, then you are not qualified to face Allah except in some instances, Allah. Except in some instances. Like we said, if you must observe salat, you have to observe salat in a clean place. That is number one. With a clean material, that is number two. With a clean cloth, when I say material, I mean either to a mat or rug or mat or whatever. That is the material. Then number three is what you are putting on must be clean. Everything about you. Number four, you must be clean by performing ablution. Number five, your heart must be clean. If only you want Allah to accept your prayer. So, some of you, inna, inna salata taniha and in fahsha wal munkar. This is all about concept of purification in Islam. In just introduction to the main topic that I won't be able to talk today again. Purification. So if you must observe salat, you must make sure that these five things are achieved. Like I said, the place you are going to observe salat, the material you need to use to observe salat, the, the, the another material or the cloth you are putting everything in you must be clean. Do you think that you can use a boxer of a whole week, the same boxer you are using as a man, and you are still praying with him, and you think Allah will accept that from you? Rasulullah says, Inna Allah tayyibu wa la yaqibalu illa tayyiba. Of course Allah is pure, and we accept nothing but pure. So if you are dirty, if for Except on circumstantial issues, I mean conditions. Why will you be in this month today and you're not taking your bath for today? If you are not taking your bath today, then your mouth is dropping. Because you are not cleaning yourself for yourself alone. You are, the Lord. you are cleaning yourself for your God and for others who will join you in the same worship place. I don't know whether you get the logic. It's not only for yourself alone. You say, 
Sawu, sawu, sawu. Make it straight line. Make it very perfect. Shoulder to shoulder. That is Islam. Toe to toe. Your toe must touch the next person to you. Left and right. Shoulder to shoulder. Your shoulder must touch your partner, your neighbor, on the same line. Let's assume you have not taken your bath for three days. And when you say Allah, Allah, Akbar, then they will deduce, they will deduct from your mind. Because you are stinking. Why won't you take your bath? If you say you are a wali and you are dirty, that's problem. That's problem. Illa al majidub min al awliya. Al majidub min al awliya. That one is not for this podium. Allah wants you to be clean and be pure. If you see any wali, they call him wali, 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 and you see him very dirty. Yes, that is for another discussion. He could be a wali, and nothing stop him from being a wali for certain reason. His own case is circumstantial. And everybody cannot be Majizu. If you say you are Majizu, we say they should train you hundred and let's see whether you are a real Majizu. So cleanliness is next to godliness. It's what we are explaining today. And inshallah, next week we will continue our discussion. Inna la ya'amu radu l'ihsan wa ita'izi qurba wa yaniha anil fashai wal muk al bagi ya'izu kula anna kuta dhakkaru in this singular ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as usual has spread out threes of his do's and threes of his don't. And I say, whatever Allah says yes to, rocks to say yes to it. Whatever he says no to, rocks to say no to it. Whatever has happened is back to, turn your back to it. Whatever he says is crazy, you will be free back to it. Go by and go by the end of the city. I mean, the family of the other, 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 the